What's up guys, this is Kefis, back in WoW to demonstrate another macro from my Kefis Macros plugin for Gnome Sequencer Enhanced. Today we're going to take a look at the Prot Paladin. So again, remember this is not a full-on guide to how to play a Protection Paladin, but rather how to use my macros, how they work, and all that good stuff. Now, I actually have updated the macros since the last video. Uh, if you download from the same link, you will get the updated version. Just replace, if you've already downloaded like Gnome Sequencer Enhanced and you've downloaded my plugin, just download my new plugin. It's the same place, same uh, link. The link will be in the description below and just replace your old folder. And now Prot Paladin will come with two macros. And I've also included some Unholy uh, Death Knight macros as well, which I'll get into in another video. That one will probably require a little bit of explanation. But today we're going to take a look at this here. And so we've got two macros now. If I hit G S, you will see two macros pop up. Prot pal and then prot pal all is what they're called. So that might be a little confusing. The uh, description for that though, if we look at it here, says prot pal is protection paladin macros, and then it gives the talents that I recommend. And then prot pal all is protection paladin macro with active mitigation abilities, and I will explain that. Now, if you look there, it shows what talents to use. We're going to look at talents real quick. Now here's something to explain. Someone pointed out in my last video that with my Retribution Paladin, I was recommending a talent, and then I also had, I wasn't recommending Execution Sentence, but Execution Sentence was in the macro. That's because I'm giving you guys options. I mean, if you want to use Execution Sentence, you don't have to go with the talents that I recommend, unless I specifically address that in like a video or a guide or something. You can, you're free to choose whatever talents you want. That's kind of the idea. So if I put Execution Sentence or abilities in the macro that weren't recommended under the talents, it's, it's, it's optional for you. I'm trying to give you guys as many options as I can, so just keep that in mind um, when, when, you know, when we do this. That's why I'm doing these videos to kind of explain those further. But here are the talents that I'm using as a Protection Paladin. I do recommend that you use Blessed Hammer. Of course, if you don't use Blessed Hammer, the macro will work just fine. I'll use Hammer of the Righteous instead. Um, the rest of them really don't matter until you get down to... I recommend Hand of the Protector, just a little bit more healing. This is one of your active mitigation abilities, kind of. And then I recommend, along with that, um, Righteous Protector. Every time you use Shield of the Righteous, it reduces the remaining cooldown of Light of the Protector slash Hand of the Protector and Avenging Wrath by three seconds. So that goes hand in hand. It makes it a little bit easier, especially when you're using macros and you're just kind of spamming buttons. It makes it a lot easier. So that's basically the one, all the ones that matter. The rest is up to you entirely to choose. Um, so let's get into actually how you're going to use these. Now, keep in mind that I'm in a good spot to show you guys this. I wanted to go to where there was actually some trash so that I could kind of demonstrate a few things. But this is also a good example of when you should probably consider using a macro like this. Because this is... Um, the thing about tanking, obviously... See, there's, there's what Blessed Hammer looks like. It's freaking awesome. You actually throw hammers around your head and they just fly out and about it's really cool um but the thing about using like a tanking macro you have to remember that like if you like when i always give disclaimers for these macros like be careful if you're going to use these in group situations i recommend that you don't entirely until you understand how they work or at least you get the idea of how much dps you're doing um your goal is to always do more dps but that is especially uh, a case here when, when using a tank macro because you got to understand that as a tank you really have to be on your game I mean, you, you cannot afford to get it wrong, to mess up, to not survive, to not hold aggro, to not do things correctly. So you definitely need to keep that in mind. So basically, at the sneeze and it's not coming, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, so what I'm saying is, when you use a tank macro like this, it's good, like, I'm using it in a good location. Like, if I wanted to bring my protection paladin here and do some, like, some transmog farming, or if I was out in Tanan jungle doing some of that stuff. I would totally do it there. If I was in an actual raid, I would second guess the decision to use a macro like this just because I want to make sure that I am playing the class absolutely flawlessly for my team because my team is depending on me to keep aggro, to stay alive, and to do things right. Of course, on the other hand, Protection Paladin specifically is not very well received right now. I actually don't mind it because it's one of the easier classes to macro, but I can totally see why a lot of people aren't getting into it because of how straightforward it is. I mean, it's a very straightforward class. I actually did like a first impressions uh, video on it, which, uh, you know, of course wasn't really a guide, but it was like my first impressions of it. And it turns out I was really overthinking how the class plays. 
Um, it's really straightforward. I mean, you've got Blessed Hammer, you've got Judgment, you've got Consecration, and then you've got Avengers Shield, and that's basically your four core abilities in terms of like your, your core rotation. And really, you just keep hitting those and keep those on cooldown. There is a little bit of a priority. I'm not going to say there's not a priority to it, but it, they're all cooldowns. So, I mean, obviously you can reset the remaining cooldowns, you can shorten the cooldowns, that kind of stuff. Um, but generally, you're just going to use those when they're available. That makes it very, very easy to macro the class. Because, you know, there really isn't much to that. Any class where it's just a bunch of cooldowns, a lot easier to handle than classes that don't. Another good example is like Beast Mastery Hunters, when it's really just a lot of cooldowns. It becomes a very simple class to macro. Um, but, the thing about tanking nowadays is that you have to pay attention to these new active mitigation abilities. And active mitigation is kind of the way Blizzard's going with tanking. It's like, you have a couple main abilities that you use specifically for the tanking, like, portion of the, you know, like, basically, okay, so let's just say, let's just look, focus on the red power, or uh, the prop paladin now. You have one main mac, um, active mitigation ability, and that is Shield of the Righteous. Shield of the Righteous is like a, I think it's like a 14 second cooldown, and it's got like three charges. Which means that you could use it like, well, you know, three charges, you can use it like three times in a row, which you really probably don't want to do, uh, because every time you use it, you get a like four and a half, you get a bubble on yourself for like four and a half seconds. It's not like a complete damage absorbing bubble. What it is, is it, it like reduces the amount of damage you take for four and a half seconds. So you can cast that three times in a 16 second window, and what it's going to do is it's going to, uh, it's going to like reduce the amount of damage you take. Now, of course, you know, you then have to wait 16 seconds for you to get a charge back. So what that means is you want to use Shield of the Righteous when you know you're going to take some damage. You don't want to, like, not use it ever, but you definitely want to not use it all the time because if you just use it willy-nilly and you don't use it at the most important, most appropriate times, you're not going to get it you're not going to get the most out of it. Because the bubble isn't like, oh, uh, until you take so much damage, it's a, it's a time limit bubble. So that's why it's called active mitigation, and that's kind of how they designed it. It's not an ability that you just kind of spam willy-nilly, it's one that you have to, I like saying willy-nilly, <laughs> willy-nilly, it's one that you kind of have to spam, you know, with, with some intelligence behind it. You gotta, you gotta know what you're doing. So if I, if I put Shield of the Righteous in a macro, you might not get all of the benefits of it and that's why there are two macros one is a macro that has all the active mitigation abilities in it the other one doesn't the other kind of ma active mitigation ability that you have is light of the protector or hand of the protector if you take in that talent either one will work now what what that ability does is it heals you for 25 percent of your missing health which means that the lower health you have the more it's going to heal you so if you have 30% health, it'll heal you for 25% of your missing health. So 25% of 70% of your health. Now, if you have 70% uh, health, then it's only going to heal you for 25% of the 30% of your remaining health. Does that make sense? So the less health you have, the more effective it's going to be. And it's really useful to use it uh, regularly, but it's definitely useful to use it when you're lower health because you'll get more out of it. So that's something to think about. Now, what I've done is I've created two macros for you because one of them is going to have both Light of the Protector and Shield of the Righteous in it so that it'll use those automatically. The other one doesn't. That allowing you to put those abilities separately on your bar and you can use those more intuitively. So you can put Shield of the Righteous on your bar separately and you can put Light of the Protector on your bar separately. And then basically what the macro is going to do otherwise is use Consecrate, Avenger, Shield, um, a Judgment, and Blessed Hammer or Hammer of the Righteous depending on which talents you've chosen. And that's all they're going to do. So basically, it simplifies the rotation, allowing you just to keep those buttons on one button, making it a little bit easier. And then all you have to focus on is your active mitigation abilities. Or when you're in a situation like this, when you're just kind of out doing like random stuff, you can just use like an all-in-one button macro. It'll keep you keep you healed up a little bit, keep you alive, keep you going. I mean, in a place like this, it doesn't matter anyways. And you'll just use your abilities do a little bit more damage or whatever, it doesn't matter. So that's basically how these macros are going to work. So you use one or the other. And that's basically all there is to this class. Now in terms of how you should use these macros, obviously you want to make sure that your taunt is on a button by itself. So Hand of Reckoning is an 8 second cooldown. It's a pull slash taunt ability. You want to use it to taunt your target. So like if I walked up to this guy right here and I hit Hand of Reckoning, it's going to taunt him to me. What you really want to do though, is you want to save that for whenever something pulls threat off you or where you want to gain more threat. Another ability that you can use to pull 
the attention of like a pack or whatever is Avengers Shield. Now I have included Avengers Shield in the macro, but what I recommend that you do is put Avengers Shield on the separate button anyways, because here's the thing, look, I don't have anything targeted right now. If I start hitting the macro button, what'll happen is, look, I'll start doing the Blessed Hammer because it doesn't require a target, so that's not hitting anything, and I'm just Blessed Hammering over and over, and it also can pop Consecrate down when you don't want it to. So what you want to do is pull everything together and then drop your Consecrate. So then what you're going to do is like get in range of everything that you want to fight and then use your macro. That's basically how you're going to do it. So like let's say this is a good example here. I'll probably kill half this pack anyways because they're all pretty weak. But if I walk up and like let's say we'll pick this big guy. We'll use Avengers Shield. Now it's going to bring anything that will. See it brought all these guys to me. Now I'm going to start spamming my macro. If I just spam it right away it might use Avengers Shield but it most likely is going to drop Consecrate. It's going to plop pop plop <laughs> blessed hammer and it's going to do things that i don't want it to do but if i wait then i can assure that it's going to work here let's take out shanix maybe shanix might beat me because he sometimes i don't know i just don't do things right so you want to make sure that you're definitely in right position before you start using the macro but you're pretty much always going to use the same abilities whether you're doing single target or aoe even though there might be a little bit of a priority difference between the four abilities uh, the four abilities I'm referring to, of course, are Avengers Shield, Consecrate, Judgment, and Blessed Hammer. The uh, priority might be slightly different depending on, like, uh, uh, if you're single target or AoE. But since they're four cooldown abilities, it really doesn't matter. You're going to be keeping them going cooldown as much as possible anyways, and then focusing on your active mitigation ability. Using Light of the Protector to heal yourself up a little bit, and using Shield of the Righteous to keep that bubble up on you. Okay, Shanax was pretty easy as a prod paladin. Look at all that wonderful gear that I'm going to use to turn into gold. Uh, so that's basically how you play the Protection Paladin. I hope this is helpful for you. Again, remember that as a tank, you are definitely, you have a lot more responsibility than like a DPS class. So you definitely want to make sure that you know, understand how to play your class, understand how those active mitigation abilities work. Don't just run into a raid, say you're going to tank it, and then like try to use this macro and get yourself killed and get your team killed and not know what you're doing, okay? So just keep that in mind. But if you're out doing little stuff like this, whatever, these macros are really good. And you know, the one actually might do okay in a group situation uh, without the active mitigation abilities included it might get you by if you get used to how it works if you understand the flow and you can kind of control it a little bit it might even help things out a little bit i mean honestly if i'm tanking and some of you will probably say don't tank for me but i actually have a lot of friends who are, are cool with stuff like this so i'm lucky but if i was to tank i would probably use the one without active mitigation personally because then it would allow me to focus on the encounters more people you know uh, it's funny i get this a lot even though i've explained this to death i'll have people leave comments like oh it's kind of funny that you make macros for classes that have three abilities and it's like dude you don't understand like it doesn't matter if it's three abilities or 20 abilities I cannot look at the action bar and look at the encounters at the same time so if I have to monitor different cooldowns having macros to keep those in one button makes it easier because I don't have to look at that action bar I don't know how many times more I can explain that to people to get them to understand but it really doesn't matter if it's not for you fine don't use it it's all good but if it's something that might help you out I hope it does because understand that I'm not here to force this down anybody's throat I'm not here to say that this is the best way to play I'm not here to tell you how to play the game I can't stress that enough but these are here to help you if you want to try them if they don't work for you then obviously don't use them but if they do that's great so keep that in mind if you're going to if you're going to try these out just remember that the most important thing is that you're doing the job that you need to do when you're playing the role that you're going to play and otherwise i hope these help you out so thank you guys for watching leave feedback in the comments below let me know what you think of this if there's anything i can do to make it better if you have any suggestions obviously i'm open to those uh, let me know if this helps you out but don't forget to like and share and favor this video well you don't favorite things anymore but you get the idea leave comments and feedback guys you guys have been great i really appreciate all the support it's been extremely positive overall and i'm glad to be able to help out as many people as i can so thank you guys for watching have a wonderful day this is kefis until next time